We're here from GirlParts.com and today we're going to take a look at installing and using a rotisserie on a Weber Genesis Silver Gas Barbecue. This is a super simple project so let's just dive right in. First we're going to pull out the warming rack in the left cooking grate so we have a little room to work. Um, you actually have to pull these grates when you're cooking pretty much anything on the rotisserie. Um, there's just not that much clearance between the grate and the spit rod. And sometimes if you're doing like a prime rib or a large cut of meat, you actually have to pull the flavorizer bars out of the way and drop a drip pan in the bottom just to uh, keep from uh, wreaking havoc on your clean out tray that's underneath there. So anyway, let's get back to business. You grab the stainless steel mounting bracket and secure it to the grill body with the uh, nuts and bolts that they provide. Um, make sure the nuts go on the inside and that's pretty much it. Tighten those down and you're almost done. Told you this was easy. Let's just take a quick look at the uh, spit rod assembly before we throw some food on here. These Weber rotisseries come with the uh, counterweight uh, for the spit rod to help offset food that you may skewer a little bit off center to keep the motor from working too hard. To add this weight, you just unscrew the, uh, the end of the handle and drop the weight in there and then tighten it back into place. The tines just slide right onto the spit rod and tighten up with the thumb screw. All right, so our new toy is installed and ready to use. Let's get a chicken on here. So we're starting with an organic roaster that weighs in at right around five pounds. This is a great size, and sometimes you can get two up on a spit if you're trying to feed a crowd. So first we coat the bird with a little olive oil and then rub in some wham, which by the way, may be the best dry rub ever. And uh, then finish it up with some chopped garlic and cayenne pepper. So obviously we can't just put this chicken on our spit without tying it up first and yes it's easier and cleaner to truss a chicken when it's dry but then you miss out on a bunch of surface area for that seasoning to stick to. There are a bunch of different ways to truss a chicken but we like the method we're going to show you because it pushes the breasts forward and helps them keep them plump and juicy and this may mean that that skin splits a little bit when it's cooking but we think it's a small price to pay. I'm going to start with about five feet of butcher's twine folded in half. Loop the center around the chicken's neck and then bring the twine back between the wings and the legs. Go around the legs and tie a quick half knot and uh, this is where you want to crank it down a little bit to make sure that the uh, legs tuck up, up underneath the breasts there. Now we're going to flip the bird over and tie a half knot around the back. From there, you just loop back around the neck and then you finish with the surgeon's knot. Now you flip the bird over and tuck the wings underneath the twine and then hide those little wing tips behind the legs so they don't burn off. There you have it. One little bouncing bundle of joy. Uh, feel free to hit the bird with more wham or more seasoning at this point. You probably left some on your mat just like we did. All right, it's time to get this thing on the spit. This is as easy as sliding the rod through the middle and then putting the tines in each end. You want to get this on there with the weight as evenly centered as possible, but don't forget we, this model comes with counterbalance in case you know our, our center of gravity is a bit off here. Now as far as heat, we're shooting for a grill temp of around 350-375. On this grill that means we have the back burner on medium and the front on low. Uh, and make sure if you have a middle burner that it's completely off. Uh, just remember too much heat and you're going to burn the skin before the rest of this bird is cooked. Spin the chicken on here until it hits 165 in the center. This will probably be around 45 minutes, but every grill's different and you're gonna have to keep an eye on it. This isn't a uh, set it and forget it situation. Once you pull it off, rest it five to 10 minutes before cutting it up and plating it. Find this rotisserie, the Wham Dry Rub, and parts for your grill at grillparts.com.